How's it going, people? Well, I'm going to give the Gold Book a break. I thought I'd look at some of this wonderful Islamic literature that I got a couple of years ago. It's from the Institute of Islamic Information and Education out of Chicago. And I'm sure they won't mind my helping out. And this deals with the historical fallacy of atonement. And I like a little cartoon they got here. You can even freeze frame this. It's like this judge with a gavel. And he goes, you have been sentenced to death. If you take my son as your savior, I will execute him in your place and you can go free. Do you accept him as your savior? And the guy's all, huh? He's all, yes, sir. You bet I accept. Yeah, exactly. I'll put the information below on all this. This is a little wordy. I don't know, man. We'll see if I can get it through. Get through this in one video. Print small too, Ooh. and it's blueprint on white paper. Thank you. Salvation can be defined as the deliverance from sin and its penalties. That's one way you can say it, or you could have been saved from a peril of some sort, and that would be a form of salvation, all in the same life. <laughs> Hang on. I don't feel like drinking, so I'm having a little schnapple. I'm a lousy lush. What can I say? Just not feeling it right now. The salvation, however, varies from one religion to another. In Christianity, salvation is found through the doctrine of vicarious atonement. Since human nature is cons considered in Christianity to be wayward and sinful, this doctrine states that Jesus rendered full satisfaction to God for the sins of man through his death and resurrection. That's a, yeah. In a nutshell, it's just nutty. <laughs> oh, um, Jesus took our place and his death absolves us from our sins. This is contrary to what is found in the Torah, where God says, every man shall be put to death for his own sins, and that would be in Deuteronomy 24, 16. Yeah. The matter of Jesus as Savior of mankind is refuted in the Quran. Yeah, I read it. They do like J.C., though. They, well, they call him Esau. And they like him so much, they're pretty fond of his mom. No mention of uh, any Joseph, though. <sighs> Wherein God says that he, quotations, has stamped them in their disbelief. Stamp it. For their saying, we killed God's messenger, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. He keeps calling him the son of Mary. That neither killed nor crucified him. They neither killed nor crucified him, even though it seems so to them. And that's Surah 4, 155, 157. There's a comma. I don't know if it's straight through or. I think it is. Salvation, according to Jesus. Nowhere in the four Gospels did Jesus explicitly state that he would die to save mankind from sin. When accomplished by a man who asked what he could do to gain eternal life, Jesus told him to keep the commandments, Matthew 19, 16, and 17. Well, Matthew's a lot more pro-Jewish anyway. Yeah, Jesus was more the king of the Jews there, and son of David and all that. But he's there, he's that and all of them, really. Because he was trying to become king on earth. That's what I think. That's what a lot of people think. 
in other words, to obey God's law. To a similar question put to him by a lawyer, as regarded in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus told him to love God and follow man. Luke 10, 25, 28. And they know their Bible. I, I, I got this from some Muslims at the state fair, and I'll tell you what, they were actually some pretty smart guys. They knew their Bible backward and forward, man. It was fun talking with them. I wish I could have videoed it, but I, I don't want to like be disrespectful to folks. It's just ideas and religions, not people. Unless they're unworthy of any respect, then I'll totally diss their ass. All right. The role of Jesus is made clear in the Quran, where God says, Christ, the son of Mary, was, was no more than a messenger. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. See how God doth make his signs clear to them? Yet, see in what ways they are deluded away from the truth, and that's Surah 5, 75. I mean, 5 and verse 75 of that Surah. The mission of Jesus was not, therefore, to set up a new method of achieving salvation, much less the founding of a new system of belief. That was Muhammad's job. And Jesus predicted Muhammad in the Quran, by the way. It's in writing and everything, so you got to believe it. As even the Bible points out, Jesus sought only to take the Jews from their emphasis on ritual back to that of righteousness. Matthew 6, 1 through 8. Paul of Tarsus. To the origin of the doctrine of atonement, one does not go to the teachings of Jesus, but instead to the words of Paul, the true founder of Christianity. In teachings of present Christian terms and practices, like many Jews, Paul had no use of the teachings of Jesus. It's true, he never quotes them. And he himself prosecuted the followers of Jesus for their unorthodox beliefs. This zealous persecutor uh, was turned into an ardent preacher. However, through a sudden conversion around 35 CE, the Common Era, Paul claimed that he that a resurrected Jesus appeared to him in a vision thereby choosing Paul as his instrument. He was a tool for carrying his teachings to the Gentiles, Galatians 1, 11, 12, 15, and 16. Paul's credibility in any capacity is questionable. However, when considering that one, there are four contradictory versions of his so-called conversion in Acts uh, 9, 3, 8, 22, 6 through 10, 26, 13 through 18, Galatians 12, 6, Deuteronomy 18, 20, and Ezekiel 13, 8, 9. I'll have to look those up. Uh, that revelations come only from him. And three accounts of numerous disagreements between the other disciples and Paul regarding his teachings are recorded in Acts. And isn't that awfully suspect? I agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mythmaker Paul and the creation of uh, the history. Uh, history, Christian Church. Uh, I don't see the book handy. Hiam Maccabee, you should check it out. He, does, he talks about this a lot. Interesting. Experience and observation has taught Paul that 
preaching among the Jews was not feasible. He therefore chose to go to non-Jews. By doing so, however, Paul disregarded a direct commandment, uh, a direct command from Jesus against preaching to other than a Jew. Matthew 10, 5 and 6, and he really did. Check it out. In short, Paul set aside the actual teachings of Jesus in his desire to be a success. Pagan influence. Among the pagans of Paul's time, a wide variety of gods existed. Although these gods had different names and were embraced by people with different uh, from different areas of the world, Adonis of Syria, Dionysus from uh, from uh, Trace, uh, Attis from uh, Pi, 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 Phyga, yeah, Phyga. Uh, sorry, sorry with PH too, man. Um, for instance, the basic concept of each cult was the same. These sons of God died violent deaths and then rose again to save their people. But that was different somehow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Since the pagans had tangible savior gods in their old religions, they wanted nothing less from the new. They were not able to uh, accept any sort of an invisible deity. Paul was quite accommodating, preaching therefore of a savior named Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died and rose again to save mankind from Sin, Romans 5, 8 through 11, and 6, 8, 9. Yeah, didn't he say, oh, hey, there's an, un there's an unknown God you've got. That's him. Oh, we can write his name under that now. Yeah, Paul was crafty. The Bible itself points out the error of Paul's thinking. While each of the four Gospels can contain an account of the crucifixion of Jesus, these accounts are strictly hearsay. None of the disciples of Jesus were witnesses to such, having fled his side in the garden, Mark 14, 50. Yeah, but they were divinely inspired. Heavenly messengers filled them in on the stuff they missed. It was like heavenly TiVo. You know? <laughs> they had a DVR of it. All right. In the Torah, God says that the one who is hanged upon a tree, crucified, is a curse. Deuteronomy 21-23. Paul sidestepped this by saying that Jesus became accursed in order to take the sins of take on the sins of man. Galatians 3:13. You want to take it on? Huh? In so doing, however. Paul set aside the very law of God. The resurrection, wherein Paul says that Jesus conquered death and sin for mankind, Romans 6, 9, 10, plays such an important part that one uh, part that who does not believe is not considered a true Christian. 1 Corinthians 1514. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> Here too the Bible lends a little support to Paul's notions. First of all, not only was there no eyewitness to the actual resurrection. But all post-resurrection accounts are in contradiction with each other. The pre-resurrection accounts are pretty bad too. They're a mess. The whole, the whole New Testament, the four Gospels, don't agree very much at all. Just on the outline, somewhat. Yeah, 
as to who went to the graveside, what happened there, and even, even where and to whom Jesus appeared. Uh, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20. Secondly, although Christianity states that the body following resurrection will be a spiritual form, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, Jesus had obviously not changed, for he both ate with his disciples, Luke 24, 30, 41 through 43, and allowed them to touch his wounds. Yeah, he showed up to, to the in the Book of Mormon, and their whole community came by and fingered him. Everyone, they must have taken all day. Yeah, it's like, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Poke him and move on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, finally, as the divine Son of God in Christianity, Jesus is said to share in God's attributes. One cannot fail to wonder, however, just how it could be possible for God to die. Yeah, and create himself. A bunch of things. In his desire to win souls among the pagans, Paul simply reworked a number of major pagan beliefs to come up with the Christian beliefs scheme of salvation. No prophet, including Jesus himself, taught such concepts. They were authored entirely by Paul. The ultimate sacrifice. You know, their sacrifices are burnt offerings. Jesus wasn't burnt, unless you talk about his like brief sojourn down below. At the earth's core where hell is, I guess long accustomed to making sacrifices to their gods, the pagans easily grasped Paul's notion that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, whose blood washed away sin. A, a common ceremony during this time in various Middle Eastern cults, such as those of Attis and Mithras, was that the um, Tarabulum, a person descended into the, a pit covered over with grill work upon which a uh, upon which a bull or ram said to represent the pagan deity himself was then ceremoniously slain by covering himself with the blood of the person in the pit below was said to have been born again with his, with his sins washed away. Well, that sounds totally different. <laughs> it is worth noting that the Jews had given up sacrifice back in 590 BCE, following the destruction of their temple. Paul's notions, therefore, were in direct contradiction to both Old Testament teachings, Hosea 6.6, 6, and even to the teachings of Jesus himself, Matthew 9.13, which stressed how God desired that good virtue, uh, that God desires good virtues, not sacrifice. While Paul stressed that God's love was behind the sacrifice of Jesus, Romans 5.8, the doctrine of atonement instead shows a harsh deity satisfied only with the murder of his own innocent son. Paul was way off base here, for the Old Testament is full of references to the love and mercy of God to man. Psalms 36, 5, 11, Psalms 103, 8 through 17 revealed through his forgiveness. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Uh, Psalms 86, 5 through 7. And which even Jesus spoke, Matthew 6, 12. They were probably just lifting from Psalms anyway. Pagan influence in Christianity 
even extends to its sacred symbol. Although Paul calls the cross of Jesus the power of God, 1 Corinthians 1.18, reference works such as the Encyclopedia Britannica, Dictionary of Symbols, and the Cross and Ritual, Architecture and Art, point out that the cross was used as a religious symbol centuries before Jesus. Uh, Bacchus of Greece, Tammuz of Tyre, Bell of Chaldea, Odin of Norway are just a few examples of ancient pagan gods whose sacred symbols was that of a cross. Imagine that. <coughs> Original sin. Central to the doctrine of atonement is Paul's notion that mankind is a race of wrongdoers, having inherited from Adam his sin of eating of a forbidden fruit. That makes sense. As a result of this original sin, man cannot serve as his own redeemer. Good works are of no avail. Are to no avail. Uh, Paul uh, says, Paul, for even these cannot satisfy the justice of God, Galatians 2.12. <sighs> you know, this original sin, I mean, wasn't really disobeying God because he said, don't eat the fruit. Then again, it's his fault. He didn't say, hey, oh, and by the way, there's a snake in the garden. It's really the devil. And there's this thing called lying. You've probably never heard of it. As a matter of fact, I know you haven't. Because you're innocent, and you don't know any better. Yeah. That made so much sense. As a result of Adam's sin, man is doomed to die. Someday. By his death, however, Jesus took on the punishment due man. Through his resurrection, Jesus conquered death, and righteousness was restored to each salvation a Christian need wait to earn salvation. A Christian need only have faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Romans six twenty three. The get out of guilt card. Despite its uh, prominent place in Christianity, the notion of original sin is not found among the teachings of any prophet, Jesus included. In the Old Testament, God says, The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. And that's Ezekiel 18, 20 through 22. Personal responsibility is also stressed in the Quran, where God says, No bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another. Man can have nothing but what he strives for. At Surah 53, 38 through uh, 38, 39. Um, the doctrine of original sin gave Paul the means to justify pagan influence in his scheme of salvation. Irresponsibility became the hallmark of Christianity. Ir irresponsibility became the hallmark of Christianity through this doctrine. However, for by transferring sins unto Jesus, Christians assume no responsibility for their actions. Hadn't thought of that, had ya? Salvation in Islam. By the seventh century, the, uh, the doctrines conceived by Paul had been embellished to the point where Christianity was almost entirely a man-made religion. Almost. At this time, God chose to send Muhammad as his final messenger. Yeah, but what about Joseph Smith and Sun Yun Moon and David Koresh? In order to set things straight once and for all, for mankind, and I don't know, a book that's only good in Arabic. <laughs> yeah, 
since God is almighty, he doesn't need the charade concocted by Christians in order to forgive man. In the Quran, God says, we are all created in a state of goodness. 3030. He has not hardened man. Uh, he has not burdened man with any original sin. Having forgiven Adam and Eve. 2 26 through 28, 7 23 24. As he forgives us. 11 90, 39 53 through 56. I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> As we are all personally responsible for our actions, 228, uh, wait, 2, 286, excuse me, 6, 164, there is no need for a humanly concocted savior in Islam. Salvation comes from God alone. 28, 67. Then why is Jesus Isa born of a virgin in the Quran too? And why did you have to have him predict Muhammad? Just chime in, help me out. Alright. Thus did Islam seek to restore the true meaning of monotheism. For in the Quran, God says, who can be better in religion than one who submits his whole self to God, does good and follows the way of Abraham, the true in faith? For 125, 40, 33, the religion of man. The evidence is overwhelming that the concept of salvation in Christianity is. Uh, do uh, its doctrine of vicarious atonement came not from God, but from man via pagan rituals and beliefs. I got it. I can top you. All religions came from man, from their imagination and their needs to make sense out of stuff before they had the means to figure it out. Yeah, let's throw everything we know away and go back to the bronze, no, the Neolithic. Yeah, let's reinvent fire. All right. Paul uh, effectively shifted the center of worship away from God by saying that Jesus was the divine agent of salvation. Think about that one. Galatians 2.20 In so doing, however, Paul set aside all teachings of God's prophets and even the concept of monotheism itself, since God in Christianity needs Jesus for his divine helper. You need a middleman who seems to looks a lot like a pagan deity. The grain king and all that. Take a closer look. With his very salvation at stake here, the Christian should take a closer look at what he believes in and why. No, he can't, because he has faith, and faith forbids that. God says in the Quran, O oh, pe people of the book, commit no excesses in your religion, nor say of God aught but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of God, for God is one God. Glory be to him. Far exalted is he above having a son? But it says Adam was the son of God. To him belong all things in the heavens and on earth, and enough is God as a disposer of affairs for 171 and that's Aisha Brown wrote that uh, there it is and is there more that's it and then you've got this nifty cartoon 
You can freeze frame it, it's awful funny. And I'll put all that below. I hope you learned something. I might have just made a whole bunch of new Muslims. <laughs> Don't thank me though. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having, and uh, let me know if you learned something. Or if you just want to say something. Just don't spam me. But, yeah. And no personal messages as a response to this video. Please put it where the public can read it. Bye.